In this video, I look at how different size soft boxes can create different soft lighting effects. Adorama TV presents Take and Make Great Photography with Gavin Hoey. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that has everything for us photographers. And in this video, we're going to have a look at soft light and how it changes according to well, which light modifier you use. Now, let me start by defining soft light. Soft light is all about the shadows and how quickly they grade from shadow to highlight. The softer the light, the smoother the blend from shadow to highlight. And that's what we're trying to achieve generally with portraits is soft lighting. Unless you have a specific need for hard lighting, soft is the way to go. Now to achieve it, you need to modify your flash. And as you can see, there are various modifiers you can use. The bigger the light source relative to the subject, the softer the light becomes. Keep that in mind as we go through the video. And I'm gonna try each of these different light modifiers and see how they affect a portrait. Now to do that, of course, we need a model. So let me go and get one. So today I'm joined in the studio by Brian. Do you want to say hello? Hello. And he's going to be my model for today. And really we're going to start by doing some test shots. And this is a great thing to do if you're fairly new to lighting. Get your lighting, get somebody brave like Brian to stand in front of your camera and take some pictures and see how the size of your light affects the softness. All of these shots are going to be taken with the same flash. This is the Flashpoint Rove Light 600 from Adorama. And I'm going to try and get everything the same. So it's about one meter away from Brian. And we're going to try and keep all of the shots with the same distance from the front of the light to Brian. And all of the shots around about F8, just to try and keep everything as close as I can. Now, the first light modifier I'm going to use is just a standard reflector. Now, this shouldn't give soft light. This should give the opposite, hard light. But it gives us a benchmark to work from. OK, let's uh, take a shot and see how it comes out. OK, here we go. So looking at that picture, the light is very hard. That means the shadows have a very clear, defined edge, which is exactly what you would expect from a standard reflector. Now we're trying to get soft light. So increasing the size of the light source relative to the subject is what we need to do. So let's get rid of this small reflector and put something just a little bit bigger on. So for the second shot, I've switched over to one of the glow soft boxes. This is one of the, the parabolic ones. And it's a little bit bigger in size than our uh, reflector, but also it's got a soft front covering as well. So those two things alone should give us softer light but let's see. Okay, Brian, here we go. So same shot as before. Brilliant. And one more. Yeah, and straight away you can see how much softer the light is and how much more it spreads out. The shadows are more gentle. That is instantly a much more flattering light if you're after soft light. But it's still quite a small light modifier. Let's try something just a little bit bigger. So as you can see, we've gone up a size in softbox. This one is a little bit bigger again, and it should in theory give us a little bit softer light. Let's take the shot. Yep, and sure enough, the light is just that extra little bit softer. Not enormously, because we're still doing quite a tight head and shoulders shot, but a difference is definitely there. Okay, let's swap it out to the last light modifier, which is a, a giant softbox. So for the last light in this little setup, I'm using this massive softbox. This is the Westcott seven foot parabolic umbrella, and I've got the diffusing cover on it as well. This is a huge light source, and in theory, therefore, a soft light source. It's still the same one meter distance from Brian. It's still metering F8. Let's take a shot. Here we go. And again. Yeah, much, much softer. Clearly this is a, a, an incredibly large light source and it's very close to our subject. So it's not surprising that this is the softest light of all. 
Now, looking at some of the results, you might be wondering whether you need such a huge light source because on the head and shoulder shots, some of those smaller softboxes gave pretty good results. So why would you want such a large softbox? Well, let me take another shot and I'll show you why. So let's come back here and I'll do a full length shot. Yeah, okay, so I've got beautiful soft lighting on my full length shot and I have a giant softbox in the way. And it wouldn't matter whether I'm using a big softbox or a small softbox. If you want to go full length, then you need to move your light further away. So let's put that into practice. Let's see what happens if I move this light further away. So let's put it right at the end of the studio. So it's much further away than it was before. Now I need to re-meter for that because of course if you move the light or you move the subject away from the light, the amount of light hitting them will change, so you need to re-meter to find out what the correct exposure is. Okay, so it needs to be a little bit brighter, it's measuring f3.6. Let's just try that again. Okay, we're back to f8. So even though the light is now much further back, the softness on Brian is still there because relative to the size of Brian, that light source is still quite big. So that's the advantage of a giant softbox is you can push it way back out of your shot, which means you don't see it if you want to do a full length shot. Okay, Brian, are you ready to do a shoot? Okay, here we go. Yeah, let's give, give that a, a flick at it. Okay, are you ready on three? Ready? One, two, three. That's pretty good. I love that. Can we go again? One, two, three. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's if you could. I got it, yeah, yeah. So there we go, we've got a whole range of different shots there. All we need to do now is to get my favorite shot into Photoshop and do a little bit of editing, and we're gonna do that right now. Don't forget to check out Adorama's latest contest and your chance to win amazing prizes. It really is amazing what you can do with just one light. And if you've got access to a range of light modifiers, you can change and shape and adjust the light in all sorts of ways. Now the modifier I loved on this shoot was that giant seven foot parabolic umbrella from Westcott. It gave some fantastic soft lighting. Have a look. So you can see the soft lighting in action by looking at the shadows, particularly around the back of the chair here. Notice how the shadow very quickly blurs and disappears. That's soft lighting in action. Now I can make things even slightly softer by adjusting the contrast because with soft lighting you're thinking contrast and if I pull it down slightly then that adds to that soft lighting feel. Thing is I do like a bit of contrast in my pictures so I'm going to come down to clarity and I'm going to increase the clarity. Now that will put some contrast back into the picture but only on the mid-tones so it'll pick up details on the, the material and the textures here rather than changing the whole contrast. I also like to play around with my colors a little bit too so I'll just pull down the vibrance and pull up the saturation again just to, to lower the general color scheme but make sure it doesn't go too monochromatic. So that gives me the look I'm after but